Why are people putting Das Rheingold on auditions today? And you see that not just in first horn, fourth horn, second horn, it's because they all get to play it. <laughs> it's something that is important in the opera literature, but major orchestras play excerpts from the ring cycle all the time. What is the opening? It is an arpeggio. It's the same three first notes as you would play in Heldenleben. It's the same last three notes, and Beethoven three. It's some of the same notes that you would play in Shostakovich five. So you're covering the same notes, but in a different style and a different dynamic. And it demonstrates your legato playing. Can you start a work softly without going with no sound? And I think a lot of conductors want to be able to hear. Can they just start something? You may have to do Faust Symphony, which the fourth horn player plays a very soft, low E flat. And this is a great way of demonstrating the legato playing, your intonation, again, color of sound, so you have the same sound from the low to the high, big leaps. And how do you practice that? Well. I encourage my students to practice it backwards. And they kind of look at me weird. But I said, if you can go. You're starting to get the idea of how the air has to move. And I'm saying the same three letter word over and over, but it's air. Because you have to have this air in different styles. You have to breathe for the music, which I haven't really uh, demonstrated, but I think important to change the characters of your music, you have to breathe differently for the music. So if I were going to play the opening of Das Rheingold, I certainly wouldn't go. It would set me up in the wrong kind of musical idea that I want to present. I probably wouldn't get the right kind of air to last the entire phrase. So I think learning to breathe for what you're going to play so maybe that train is moving already and you're just going to hop on top of it instead of jumpstart it. So that's an idea of having the tempo going in your head. Years ago, I saw a production of Das Rheingold at Lyric Opera. And I will never forget thinking, this is fantastic. Because the Rhine Maidens were on bungee cords. They're coming down, they're going back up. And that's the rhythm, and that you just jump right on that bungee cord and take a ride, you know. So you don't get you don't get stuck because everybody goes, I gotta play really soft. And they can't move. So seeing something moving, maybe it's the Rhine River that's moving that you can jump on. But having some kind of visual tool for that, I think, is really important to be able to be successful on most excerpts, but especially for Das Rhine Gold. It's continual. If you are an extra player and you're subbing in the Chicago Symphony and you get put on eighth horn, you get to start. That's pretty scary. It's not the first horn player. It goes eight, seven, six, five, four, three, two, one. First horn player only has to play it twice in the opening call. And the eighth horn player, who's probably an extra player, gets to do it over and over. So it's a great way of learning to be ready to play when they call you to play extra in an opera company. Because the, usually you would have to use people playing Wagner tuba and the opening of Das Rheingold as an extra player. So learning your basics, your arpeggios, you will find that if you start looking at scales and and maybe fourths and fifths, you're gonna find that you're, oh, I'm already practicing Das Rheingold because, oh, that's a fifth, that's a fourth. So you start adding all these uh, arpeggios and scales together and you'll find that you've covered all the basics and you're 
orchestral excerpt list.